you need to be the best. I'm not saying you need to be a professional. I'm saying you need to be skillful. You need to do what it takes to grow in that instrument, in your craft. And that is getting lessons, getting instruction, getting books, videos, whatever you can take. Talk to those that are better than you if they're willing to help you, instruct you. Those that have more time in this craft. Ask them for something. Beg of them. Stop them. Make them give you what they have obtained. Because it was given to them freely, so it can be taken freely. If anybody says they want to charge you for lessons, they are robbing the people of God. I'll say it right here. I'll say it right now. You can say that. If you charge for lessons to church people, you are robbing the people of God. I'll say it again. And if it goes on YouTube, it goes on YouTube. <laughs> because you are robbing the people of God. I understand there's time. That's your energy. That's your whatever. Whatever you want to say, that's fine. You need to go seek it out. Yes, you need to spend gas. You need to spend time. You need to spend effort. Seek them out. But if they're charging you, go somewhere else because they're not worth your time. I will tell you that right now, and I said it. If anybody ever asks me about, because you know I play bass and drums and stuff like that. If you ask me, I'm not going to ask you for a quarter before I tell you anything. It's a, it's a robbery. And if, any, if you try to charge somebody, you are stealing from the people of God. I don't know why I needed to say that so emphasisly, but somebody needed to hear it. This is your practicing. Practice regularly. Practice all the time. I, with your church group, if you can. And if you can't, get the music from them. Practice it at home. Go through it. Have an idea. Because this will make you more confident at your instrument. You want confidence. You don't want big headedness. But you cannot minister if you don't even know what the notes are. If you don't even know how to project your voice. You need to be able to handle that instrument. That is your calling of God. God has given you the responsibility. He has placed whatever it is in your hands. It is your responsibility to be confident with that. God does not like sissies. Amen? <laughs> Nobody, have you ever been to a district function, a uh, sector function, and you go up, you see the musicians, you don't see them all timid. No, 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 I don't, no, no. And then when somebody tells them, no, change your key, they start crying and they throw down their instrument and they walk off. I've seen it, but not at a district function. Why? Because they are confident musicians. They know, and if, some, if they mess up, so what? So what? You have to be confident in your craft to know that you can go on beyond that mistake, beyond that mess up, beyond what happened. Because if you don't, if you crumble, the God can't flow through that. You will stop what's going on. And if you are confident in that, you can proceed with what God is trying to do. Amen? Amen. Next part of being a musician is be humble. There's a big difference between scared and humble. You need to be humble. You can't get a big head. It will kill your ministry, I guarantee you. You need humility. You need to know that I am only what God makes me. I am only what God has given me the opportunity to do. If somebody goes and starts puffing up your head, don't tell them as politely and as Holy Ghost filled as you could. Just thank you, but it's not that big of a deal. The second you start getting like, oh, I'm bad. I'm bad. Oh, I am bad. I'm crazy. I'm good. God will humble you, and God will humble you in a big way. Big way. I'll give you a testimony, and I would deny it beyond this day. But I was um, in, um, I was like starting to play for my youth choir on the drums, and I thought I was bad. I was like, I played jazz band in high school. I'm, I'm the man. So then they put me up to play the drums, and it was um, a black brother. He's gone on um, to pastor his own church now, and he started singing a slow song. He's like. Lord, fill this place, and it's like, it started going good, he tell the church started to just, whoo, started to go, right, and he said, all right, musicians, come on, and I was like, come on, okay, I started gospel jamming, in the middle of the slow song, I'm counting it off, <laughs> like, we're gonna go, he was like, what, <laughs> the whole church stopped, oh uh, Buzzy Lenore, organ player, Tim, he was there, he told, he told me stop, he wanted to kick me off the drum set, he like, it was a bad day. I was like trying to hold back my tears. <laughs> I thought I was bad. So that's a warning. God will humble you if you're not humble. 
Proverbs 15, 3 says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So you are wise. It is a wise thing to be humble. People will like you a lot better if you're humble than if you think you're bad. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Another part is being on time, being dependable, knowing the material. You need to be able to be depended upon if you're, you've got a job. Singers, bass players, drummers, you got a job and that's your job. If you're in a choir and you mess up, it's not that big a deal because the person next to you is either messing up too so it's not that bad or their projection will carry beyond what you did. They will carry your load. If you're by yourself and you drop your instrument, you drop the mic, everybody's going to know you did it. You were the one that messed up. And you need to be able to know the material. If you don't know the song, you're, you can learn the song. Your ear is that good enough that you can play the song. I'll tell you right off the bat, you all saw me struggling today with the drums. I don't know your songs. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know them. Majority of the time, I only hear them when we come down. And God has been able to bless me enough so that's like, okay, okay, we're going here. Okay, he's going here. He's going there. All right, okay, now I can play it. But it took me up to about a good couple choruses before it sounds good. Those of you that heard me uh, play like uh, a couple months ago in Sparks, I, the brother, Brother Josue, was like, okay, go here, go here, go here. And I'm like, uh, just like fumbling through it. And he's like, no, that's not, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. And we're very playing the guessing game with each other. So finally, with the grace of the Lord, we managed to get a good song going, and then the song was over, so... <laughs> now another part of being a good musician is not being hesitant to set up and tear down. I know this is a very sensitive subject and I know that a lot of this sector has gone through a lot of that. But if you ever feel that it's not right or you shouldn't be doing it, here's a scripture right here in Numbers 151. It says, And the tabernacle set it forth. The Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. So in the Bible days, it was the Levites and only the Levites and that could handle the equipment, the, the stuff, the whatever, the building material for the house of God. You are the tribe of Levi. It is your job for those of you that it is necessary. If it's not, God bless you, and hopefully you never have to set up and tear down again. But if it, you need to, that's your job. That's your responsibility. That is what you're supposed to do. In the Bible days, if some other person would try to come help, they had to kill them. No, this isn't your job. You don't touch the Ark of the Covenant. You don't touch the bread table. You don't touch the incense. That's not your job. You would, God would strike you dead for touching the Ark of the Covenant if you were not the tribe of Levi. That's serious. That is what you have been given the opportunity to hold. And it is your responsibility to take care of that, which includes setting up, tearing down, all that monotonous stuff that makes you sweat in your church clothes. Next, we're going to go on to the next thing. The next thing is, as a musician, you have to recognize your ministry unto God's people. You are a minister. You might not have a license, you might not have whatever you're supposed to have that makes you a minister, but that is what you are, because you are giving of yourself unto God's people. It is about God's people. That's what it is about ministry. You put yourself aside, whether it's trouble at home, trouble, guy or girl trouble, I don't know, uh, trouble with your family, trouble with your fellow musicians. I can tell you countless times that me and the organ player Tim have almost gotten to blows before service. Where he's telling me something and I'm telling him, well, you're nobody. And he's telling me this and telling me that and we're just going back at it. One another, and everybody else just like walking up under the pulpit like, okay, don't get into their business. There. But once the music starts, everything's squashed. Everything. No matter, I don't care what's going on in your life. And not to be unsympathetic. I'm... I know it's probably hard. I know it's a struggle. I know it's not easy. I know it hurts beyond anything. Believe me, I know. But for the sake of God's people, 
You have to put it aside. You have to lay it down at God's feet. Because somebody is going to get saved through your